Over the past decade, 3D texturing has shifted from manual, layer-based painting mainly using Photoshop, toward procedural, parameter-driven workflows using specialized texturing software. 3D artists expect non-destructive editing, real-time feedback, and materials that adapt seamlessly across different platforms and render engines without any hassle. As we all know, Substance Painter and Designer streamlined PBR material creation for a broad range of industries, animation, VFX, and so on, but mostly game development. Houdini, on the other hand, has long been associated with procedural modeling and simulation, and now in recent updates, it has entered the same space with Copernicus, a GPU-powered procedural texturing framework introduced in version 20.5. You see, Copernicus is not an incremental upgrade. It replaces Houdini's old CPU-based compositing system, which was slow and underused for material work. So side effects, we built it to handle real-time image processing and merge 2D and 3D workflows. And now, textures can respond directly to scene changes. But does this mean that this move is gonna revolutionize Houdini's texturing capabilities and position Copernicus as a built-in alternative to standalone material creation tools, mainly Substance and Mari. But in today's video, I want to focus on Substance tools and see what the fuss is all about. If you are interested in becoming better with Houdini, I recommend you take a look at these courses. For example, this one that will help you understand how to make this cool procedural pillar generator, creating a Houdini digital asset, and even integrating the result into Unreal Engine 5 or this course from the same instructor about how to make mega structures using procedural modeling techniques from start to finish, or this class about how to make explosions, which will take you from getting comfortable with Houdini to creating everything to compositing and rendering. And you will also find advanced courses like creating volcanoes, huge water simulations, clouds, tornadoes, and so on. You will find the links of these interesting courses in the description down below. As you may know, more than 10 years ago, when Algorithmic introduced Substance Designer and Substance Painter, they addressed the growing need for precision, consistency, and flexibility in material creation, which to be honest, many were suffering from. At least they didn't know they did. And Designer's node-based environment allowed textures to be built entirely from procedural processes, while Painter enabled direct work on 3D models with procedural masks, generators, and effects updating in real time and this was a game-changer. These tools were structured around the PBR standard, producing assets that matched across engines such as Unreal, Unity, Arnold, and V-Ray. Substance Designer's processing engine is optimized for high-resolution output, offering handling 8K textures with efficiency, and its baked maps produce predictable results across different render engines, whether it be for rendering or game development. At the same time, Painter's brush system a library of procedural materials made it accessible for different artists with varying levels of skill and experience and in different industries as well. And here's the thing. Adobe's subscription in 2019 expanded the lineup. Lizana remained the main procedural friend for environment artists in different industries including VFX, but mainly game development. Painter handled asset-specific painting and sampler converted photographs into PBR-ready materials in addition to Stager, which provided lightweight staging and rendering. So as you can see with Substance Tools, Adobe had its grip tight around almost all texturing workflows in different industries. Now, let me talk about the elephant in the room, and probably the reason why you are here in the first place. You see, before Copernicus, Houdini's compositing context ran entirely on the CPU, limiting performance and discouraging its use for texture creation. On the other hand, Copernicus, which was introduced in Houdini 20.5, uses GPU acceleration via OpenCL, in addition to Vulkan, to deliver near real-time feedback. Copernicus operates within Houdini's procedural system, so textures are treated as data streams that can draw directly from live geometry, simulations, or animation. As an example, weathering patterns can be tied to an erosion simulation and update automatically when the geometry changes. A dirt mask can be generated from live curvature data without baking an ambient occlusion map, which is interesting to say the least. I believe side effects are kind of serious about Houdini 
becoming a powerhouse of procedural texturing and effectively taking a piece of Substance Tools market share. So to make the transition easier, especially for those used to node-based texturing elsewhere, Sinofax added equivalent nodes for familiar patterns, noises, SDF shapes, and segmentation operations, and provided guides showing how common workflows translate into Houdini. Layers can be blended with procedural masks or with hand-painted masks created using the mask paint sop and results can be previewed directly on geometry. Both Copernicus and Substance Designer use node-based, non-destructive workflows. Substance focuses entirely on material creation, optimized for 2D graph evaluation and for exporting textures to other 3D software. In addition to game engines, Copernicus is embedded in Houdini's environment, so materials can link directly to modeling and simulation data. So if you're already a Houdini user, this might be even better. At least side effects are trying to make you leave substance for the moment. And this integration kind of changes how tasks are going to be approached. In substance, for example, a cracked concrete texture might be built entirely within a graph using noises, masks, and blends. And in Copernicus, on the other hand, those cracks could come from a live fracture simulation in Houdini, with textures updating in sync with any changes to the geometry. Copernicus includes generators and filters for patterns, in addition to tileable textures, multiple noise types, SDF shapes, and mask operations, allowing base color, roughness, and normal outputs to be created in parallel. So as I said before, it extends proceduralism by pulling directly from the scene data, in addition to geometry attributes, particle simulations, or physics results can be used as inputs for masks or material effects. This means an interesting thing. This eliminates the need to export baked maps and import them to a separate application or 3D software for blending. So all of this being in Houdini makes it possible to integrate custom code, open effects plugins, or machine learning filters into Copernicus networks. Both Substance and Copernicus can also produce layered-based PBR materials and tileable textures. In Copernicus, baking is integrated into the workflow as well, just like Substance Painter. So any geometry attribute, such as depth, normals, or curvature, can be rasterized into a texture space without baking the procedural chain. A simulation, for example, can drive a wetness mask that blends automatically into a material. In Substance Painter, Baking is a defined process that produces mesh maps for use in texturing. On the other hand, Copernicus, by living inside Houdini's geometry's contacts, can update baked information automatically whenever the source of geometry changes, making it effective for assets that evolve over time. And I already can see different applications for these features. Also, Substance Painter offers a dedicated 3D painting interface. In addition to projection tools, particle effects, and a library of procedural materials designed for brushwork. Copernicus, on the other hand, does not include a painting interface of that scope. So painting in Houdini is handled with a texture mask paint sop, which is best suited for creating masks or attributes that are then used for blending procedural layers. On a side note, Houdini artists have developed custom approaches, such as point-based painting systems, which are later rasterized into textures or procedural particle brushes built with Houdini simulation tools. These methods show the flexibility of the system, but also that Copernicus is right now oriented toward procedural work rather than detailed manual painting, but hopefully in the future this can change. The advantage of Copernicus is especially clear in procedural asset creation. In addition to effects-driven environments and USD-based look development, but you can also still have the flexibility that you will need, since Copernicus textures can be exported for other renderers or kept procedural for rendering in Karma. Houdini's PDG system can feed variations into a Copernicus network to produce large numbers of materials automatically, which sounds like a great thing. Substance, on the other hand, remains strong in its compatibility with a wide range of software and its ecosystem of ready-to-use materials though it remains separate from the scene in which assets are modeled or simulated. When it comes to performance, Substance Designer is optimized for fast evaluation of large 2D graphs performing well at very high resolutions, and Copernicus 
benefits from GPU acceleration and Houdini's caching, but performance can be slow if textures depend on complex geometry or simulations. In cases where geometry and texture creation is linked, Copernicus can reduce overall iteration time by eliminating external 3D software steps that are necessary when using substance tools. Now let's talk about Muddy and the future outlook. Adobe's Substance 3D Texturing Plan costs around $250 annually, with the full 3D collection paid at $60 per month. There is also no permanent free option beyond trials. Copernicus is included with Houdini. The non-commercial apprentice edition is free, of course, and the indie license, which is nearly identical, I mean compatibility, to the full commercial version, costs to $69 per year. This makes it cost compatible to Substance's subscription, with the difference that Indie includes all Houdini's 3D capabilities as well. The deciding factor is less about price and more about whether the user is ready to work with Houdini's procedural environment. When it comes to what Houdini users think about this, the introduction of Copernicus has drawn some positive attention, I mean from the Houdini community and its technical artists and environment artists. Some actually have replaced substance in their workflows, citing the benefits of avoiding additional subscriptions and staying entirely inside Houdini. Others view it as an important step for procedural look development. There is also skepticism. Studios with established substance pipelines are unlikely to switch immediately, and Houdini's learning curve kind of limits accessibility for artists without prior experience in procedural workflows inside Houdini. The consensus is that Copernicus will see adaption where Houdini is already central, but at the same time, not everyone is gonna take this step. And the introduction of Copernicus actually made me think about a trend that Side Effects is following toward integrating all the stages of asset creation, animation, simulation, and other things all inside Houdini. I mean from doing simulations in Houdini, procedural environment creation for games, motion graphics, character animation, procedural texturing, and more. Basically trying to take a piece of the market share of all major 3D software. But this is a topic for another video. And there you have it guys. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel to receive more videos like this. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next one.